Hi everyone, this is Dominic Yansel. Uh, today I'm going to show you one of the most important base uh, in, when it comes to pastry, one of the recipe for my book, the Vanilla Sable. So Sable is French for, uh, to describe the texture, a little bit like crumbly or sandy. It's the kind of texture that you get once you bite into uh, the Sable. So essentially it's a uh, crust, a crust that we use for tarts. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make it, how to uh, line it into the, the ring mold and uh, what to do with it. I have all my ingredients scaled out here and, and measured here. So everything has been uh, portioned into grams. So everything uh, is very precise. We're gonna start with the flour. So we use AP flour, all purpose flour. It's a basic flour that doesn't, doesn't have too much strength. Uh, then we have the uh, icing sugar, a little bit of salt. I like to use uh, Maldon uh, sea salt for this, or you can also use kosher salt. Then we have uh, a little bit of cornstarch and the cornstarch will help uh, hold the dough together and give this uh, crumbly texture as well. And then we have our butter. So we have a butter that I cubed. I uh, pass it in a microwave just for a few seconds, just to get it creamy. I'm gonna put this into the mixing bowl. Why do you use uh, confectioner sugar, not regular sugar? So we use confectioner sugar to get uh, this nice smooth uh, texture of the dough. Uh, the regular sugar will always uh, have to be dissolved in something like a, in the liquid. Once you add the butter, uh, I have some uh, vanilla pot right here. So that's something I really love in terms of uh, flavors and texture. I always love flavoring my, my dough. Uh, and in, in my book, you also find some uh, alternative to flavor the dough, uh, such as chocolate or hazelnut. So we cut the vanilla pot in half, then we use the back of the knife. We put it down, just right here, and we scrape with the back of the knife to extract all the little seeds. And there's about hundreds and hundreds of little seeds right here, but this is very precious. We're gonna put this into our dough right here. And we're gonna, we're gonna go one more time on the other side, right here, I'm gonna scrape all the seeds. This is like the caviar of uh, the vanilla. And then of course we'll keep this uh, vanilla pod and that we can infuse into the milk or even put it into a uh, rum or alcohol to infuse. And I'm gonna add this into uh, into the mixer with a paddle attachment. And just mix it slowly in uh, first speed until everything is combined together. So the butter is very crumbly right now. Everything is pretty mixed. It's not perfect yet, but it's okay. We're gonna add uh, one egg. So it's 50 grams uh, for one egg. That's the average size of uh, uh, medium size to large size egg. So we have the rule of the 60 that we, we learned at school when you go to culinary school in France. 60 grams for one egg. Uh, it's about 10 grams for the shell, 20 grams for the yolk, and 30 grams for the whites. So that's 60 grams total. And you, if you crack it, you'll end up with 50 grams. So we're gonna use one egg for this recipe. And mix it a little bit more. So the egg is really what's gonna uh, bring everything together and bind everything together. That's the only source of, I would say, liquid to add into this dough. And we're gonna stop it just right here. So it looks like, almost like a, a paste. It's all combined together. And you can see those tiny little pieces of vanilla, the tiny black dots, that's the vanilla seeds. I'm gonna scrape this. Yeah, I've prepared a uh, sheet wrap with a uh, plastic wrap. I like to use plastic wrap because it's easy to use, easy to remove as well. And grab my dough. That's uh, pretty soft right now. It's not really sticky. It's all nice mixed together. And I'm going to add a little more plastic wrap over and then to press it down. 
to make it as flat as possible so I can uh, get this ready for running it down with the running pin. I'm gonna make it as flat as possible so it's easier and faster to run it down. I'm gonna put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes until it gets really cold. And now I'm going to show you how to line the torch shell, which is called fonçage in French. Uh, so for this, I use a um, metal ring. So you see this one has no bottom. You can also use the one that has the bottom that you can remove or not. Uh, use a regular uh, pie uh, tin that works very well as well. For this, I use a, a little cube of butter and I'm going to rub the side the inside of the ring mold. And this is going to help me uh, to stick the dough against the, the side of the, the mold. So just a little bit, we don't need too much, just enough so it sticks. I'll put this on the side, and I have my dough that's been chilled. Uh, it's been about 10 to 15 minutes now. It's quite cold. You can see I can, can move it. Just hold it with one hand. And this step is gonna be very important. You're gonna have to work very, really fast. So we'll take a little bit of flour, we'll put it on the counter, Place this in front of you. I use a regular rolling pin. I'm gonna start running the dough. So as you can see, these cracks here, it's because the dough is a little too cold right now. So for this, I'm going to actually fold it on itself and probably warm it up a little bit so it's not as cold. So I don't want to walk the dough too much, but I want to, the dough to be uh, malleable enough so I can actually roll it. If it's too cold, it's going to crack. So now it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back from the beginning, a little bit of flour here. I go from the center out. And you don't want to put too much pressure in the beginning, so you don't want the dough to crack. And I go one way, and I turn the dough at 45 degree angle, and then I roll a little bit more. So that way, I will end up with a a circle or something close to a circle. You can see the dough starts sticking a little bit, so I'm going to put just a tiny bit more flour on top. So I always move the dough as I go, so to make sure it doesn't stick to the counter. And I have always enough flour on the bottom. So you always see me like move the dough every time I turn it. The faster you go for this, the better it is. I always suggest people to walk on a uh, uh, marble or countertop that is kind of cold. Uh, metal is not the best, so I would suggest either wood or uh, marble to roll the dough. I'm gonna roll this to about uh, three millimeters. It's about one eighth of an inch. And uh, big enough so it's the size diameter of the ring mold or, and a little bit over. So here, it's pretty good size. I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trim a little bit the other side. Just so I don't have too much excess. And if, while you're doing this, the dough is getting a little too warm, just take a break, put it back in the fridge. If you're not fast enough, it's better to do it in like two, maybe like three steps. So I'm gonna place the dough over, right in the center. And try to center the dough as much as I can from every side. And I'm gonna, then I'm gonna start pushing the dough towards the bottom without pushing the dough against the ring mold. So what I'm looking for here is really to push the dough all the way to the bottom to get this nice, beautiful angle on the bottom. I'm gonna put a little bit more flour on the bottom. Again, I move, move it all the time to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm gonna take it in front of me and I'm gonna push the dough down using all my fingers in the front. I'm gonna push the dough and try to line it, putting enough pressure so it sticks to the mold without changing the thickness. I'm gonna go all around and you can feel it again if you are these steps and it's getting too warm, just stop, take a break, put it in the fridge for about two, three minutes, you'll get better results. But don't try to go too fast. And the last part, I'm gonna push my thumb inside 
to make sure I push it all the way to the bottom. And a good way to see if you do this well is to flip it upside down and to see here the dough should be completely lined all the way to the border of the ring mold. I'm gonna put it back here and put a little more flour. Always move it around to make sure it doesn't stick. I take just a regular knife. I'm gonna cut the excess of the dough. I'm gonna do this very quick. I'm gonna save this. You can actually do a little linzer, linzer cookies that I have in my book. Don't waste the scraps. And uh, the last part to see the consistency. So you're gonna look at the thickness of the dough all throughout and it should be the same thickness as what you started with. I'm gonna let this uh, rest in the fridge for about five minutes and then we're going to bake it. And what happens if you have little holes or cracks on the base? You fix it or will it You can fix it, you can always itself. put a little, a, little bit of, a little bit of dough, these are just cracked from the temperature, but if you have a little hole you can take a small piece of dough and push it in and make it flat so you don't waste everything. All right, we're going to put this on a uh, half sheet tray with lined with the parchment paper or silicone mat works very well as well. Uh, we're gonna bake this at 350 degrees so depending on your oven it takes about 10 to 15 minutes and depending on the thickness of the dough as well. Uh, a lot of people ask me is it uh, should I dock the dough? Uh, should I make little holes on the bottom? I always suggest not to uh, especially if you put some big liquid inside. It depends on a lot of things on how you mix the dough, it depends how you line the tar shell uh, I always uh, like not to do it, so I get something cle clean and flat. Uh, if, if you're a beginner or if it's your first time doing it, you can also line it. Uh, the best way to line it for me will be a uh, coffee filter that you place on the bottom. And then you can put beans or rice or even salt on top and uh, power bake this uh, for about 7 to 10 minutes. Remove it and then finish baking it until you get a nice coloration. And we're going to put this in the oven now. There we go, our tart shell is done. As you can see, we have a nice, beautiful golden color on the outside. Still a little pale in the center, but I like it. I like it this way, so it's not too dark. All right, now we have our tart shell that is uh, fully baked and it's uh, been chilling in the fridge for about 10 minutes. So it's pretty cold. I'm gonna place this into the cake stand right here. I have made some uh, passion fruit uh, pastry cream right here and have some fresh mango that I've just sliced. And we're gonna put this together and start piping the cream in the middle of the top. So I also like sometimes to put some jam on the bottom of the top shell. Uh, gives uh, a nice uh, flavor to the top and more flavors to the fruit. I'm gonna fill this all the way. What else can you fill it with? So you can use, uh, in the book there's recipes for ganaches and you can use uh, pastry cream, you can flavor it with different, different fruits. You can do very much a lot of things. And uh, here I made a passion fruit and mangoes, two exotic fruits that go very well together. The sweetness of a mango with the acidity of passion fruit. But you can do pretty much anything you want with any fruit. I'm going to fold these uh, mangoes and place them right, right here on top. Do little curls. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but it's gonna be pretty. We, are, we have our final product, this beautiful passion fruit and mango tart. So for this recipe, I use pastry cream and passion fruit curd. There is two recipes from the book that I combine actually together. And I love this tart shell because you can do pretty much anything you want. You can put any fruits, anything you want in here and really let your creativity uh, speak. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, happy baking.